my god, what is going on here? Would you mind being a bit more quiet? Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I decided to try something different this time around and put some commentary over my time lapse. You know, just pop in here and there, talk about the model and other stuff. Basically, I'm just trying to trick you into watching these time lapse videos because, like I said in my previous project update video, not a lot of project updates will be coming in the near future from, for the reasons stated in that video. And also, the next devlog will be the final devlog of, let's call it, season 1. So there will be a break from those as well. In case this comes as a surprise to anyone, let me somewhat explain the timeline of this channel and, and why I've decided this is a good place for a break from the devlogs. So first in April, I uploaded the gameplay video and then started bi-weekly uploading devlogs, which went over how everything was made in that specific video. Now, all the devlogs up till episode 12 were recorded before the gameplay video. So that way the devlogs were coming out, but in the meantime, I still had time to work on the project, which you could see through the project update videos. Now, with the release of the next devlog, pretty much everything from that April gameplay video will be covered. And the reason why I want to take a break now is because making devlogs actually is very time consuming. So I'd rather just focus on the game right now. And then later, I'm not exactly sure when, maybe when I release the Fairy Council level, maybe maybe sooner, maybe later, but then I'll come back to going over everything that I've made in the project update videos more in detail. Okay, let's talk about the model now. So you've seen the thumbnail and you probably noticed I went completely off the rails this time around, but hear me out. So first of all, Bruh. what the hell? And secondly, I think it's really important that we look at it this way. Rayman 2, we had a hot fairy. Rayman Origins, hot fairy. Rayman 1, uh, sure. So what I'm getting at is that it's only lore accurate that Rayman 3 also has its own hot fairies. Anyway, jokes aside, I get why the original character looks so much PS1. It's basically on screen for like, what, three seconds in the entire game. So it doesn't really make sense to spend much time and resources on making it have the same quality as the other characters in the game. If only I was as smart as the original developers. But no, I obviously had to spend on this character more time than on any other character so far. At least I used a female base mesh that comes in with ZBrush to speed up the process a little bit. Overall, what made working on this character so much fun and so different from the other characters is that because I decided to change it so much, there was no concept for the character. You know, when making the teensies, for example, I used the original model as a, let's call it concept art. Whereas here, the first stages of sculpting are the concepting of the character, which is always a lot of fun. As you can see, I tried to somewhat keep the weird proportions of the original character by having an abnormally large head, but this didn't really stick with me as later on I will shrink it a little bit. It will still be too large, but just not so much. Yeah, so here's an example of me concepting the character on the fly by trying to figure out what kind of clothes I want. To quickly block in some clothes, what I usually do, like I did over here, is duplicate the body and shrink it a little bit. And now by sculpting on that duplicated shrunken body, I can quickly draw some clothes on the character. As you've seen in the title, I've opened up a new Discord server, though I must admit that I've never really used Discord much, so I'm not much of an expert on creating a Discord server. Therefore, I fully expect that once people start joining, it will turn out that I didn't turn on some kind of crucial setting or something along those lines, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Anyway, you can find a link to the server in the description of this video. And now let's maybe do a little breakdown of the server where I go over the channels and talk about how I imagine people using them. So first off, we have the Rayman 3 fan remake channel. Pretty self-explanatory, just a place for people who 
talk about anything related to the project. Then there's the community skins channel. This is where people can discuss ideas for custom skins for the project, as well as post in work in progress images or finished images if you're working on your own skin right now. If this is news to you that you can create your own skins for the project, you can watch this video to learn more. The general channel is for anything really, I guess. Now the questions channel is for videos like this one, because like I said, probably time-lapse videos are what's going to be the majority of the content right now. So I want to make them a little more interesting, but not a lot of models are like this one where they are interesting enough to talk about them. Like for the previous time-lapse of the surfboard, there would be like nothing for me to say that's interesting about it. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll try turning these time-lapse videos into a bit of a Q&A where here on this channel, you can ask pretty much anything. And if I like the question or just find it interesting enough to talk about, I'll go ahead and use it for one of these videos. Next up, there's the community game dev channel, which is for the community to share any projects related to game dev that they're working on right now, if they want to share. The Unreal Engine channel is there if you want to share any cool features or plugins of Unreal Engine, or if you have a problem with your project and if you want to find some help. Yeah, so stuff like that. Then there's the video suggestions channel, pretty self-explanatory. You can suggest anything really like, I don't know, for example, a tutorial on something. And if it looks like enough people are interested in the topic and it's something that I feel like I would like to make, then, you know, I might make that happen. Yeah, so this is kind of the first draft of the Discord server. Although I have bigger plans for it in the future, which I don't think there's any point in keeping a secret. So why don't I talk about it now? It's no secret that I don't really see myself recreating the entire game. But I haven't really talked about what I envision for the project once I move on to other things. And this is where this Discord server comes in. I want this server to become like a hub for this whole project because my intention is to not only release the Perry Council itself for people to play, but to release the whole project file with everything. So everyone will have access to all the assets I created, to my macaroni noob code, to point and laugh at and we'll be able to do whatever pleases with the project you can continue where i left off you can create some custom levels just you know random stuff for people to play with you can take just some parts you need and go off and do something entirely different just taking whatever is useful for you from this yeah so so basically anything you want and then this server will be there as a place where you could download everything where you can share your creations where you can ask for help I'll be there to support people because obviously no one knows the project as well as I do. And there are a lot of weird stuff that I've made that without my knowledge, it might be hard to figure out how to do some things. I also imagine creating some kind of documentation on how to use the project, which will be also found on the server. You get the idea. But of course, first I want to focus on finishing the Fairy Council and making it playable for everyone. All of this Discord server hub stuff will come after that at some point. Okay, if I didn't forget about anything, this should cover all the announcements I wanted to make this video. So now I'll focus more on the character and chime in every once in a while to explain my thought process behind various stuff and other stuff like that. Just like the original character, I wanted her to have abnormally large feet. So here you can see me trying to make this work. I wanted to have these slightly weird proportions on the character because for one, I think it helps with the stylization to make it fit with the other characters in the game. And secondly, it makes the character seem a little more goofy, which I think fits a character whose whole purpose is to come on screen, start complaining about noise and then just get thrown around by the main bad guy.
At this point, I'm getting happy with the ideas I have for the clothes because I feel like the hat, the skirt, the red and yellow stripes, as well as the hairstyle are enough to make it clear that this is the same character as the original one, but just heavily reimagined. Here I decided to introduce some gold elements to the character because I figured that a fairy that resides at the fairy council is probably a fairy with high status so I wanted her clothes to resemble that some way similarly to how the royal teensies have all these gold elements on their clothes. As you can see, this is all still the blocking phase where I'm still figuring out the proportions that I want for the character, like the size of the hat or how long the wings I want to be. I'm adding in layers to the skirt because, well for one, I just think it looks straight up better. But then it also, in my opinion, reinforces even further the feeling of status for the character. And another thing is that I think that this makes the design uh, slightly more grounded, which is a part of the art style that I'm creating for my project. You may have noticed that before I didn't color any of the models in ZBrush. I always left it for the texturing in Substance Painter. This model I'm coloring in again because of the fact that I don't have a concept. So I just want to have a good idea on what the colors are going to be before I properly texture the character later on. Now I'm starting to move to the character's face. Up until this point her face was pretty much just a placeholder. So my goal here is to make her look as if she was someone who gets annoyed easily and is somewhat abrasive, maybe even rude.
As you can see, there's a lot of trial and error involved. Here I finally realize that the eyes are what's really messing with me. And here is where I decided that the head is still a little too big for my taste. Here I'm making the hat even bigger because to me, these exaggerated shapes are a big part of Rayman's style. As I wanted to take a bit of a break from working on the face, I decided to start refining the hair. There's not much to say about this part, except that it's going to take a while. I usually find working on hair pretty time consuming.
The reason why I'm painting the face this way is because I just watched this tutorial on how to paint a face in ZBrush. Although I'm not entirely sold on this technique to be honest, the end effect shown in the tutorial doesn't really satisfy me entirely. But I think I can at least agree that it's a good starting point. Sometimes I clone my mesh quickly like this if I'm not sure about a change and want to see a side-by-side -side of two variations just to help me decide on a version that I like more. At this point, I'm thinking to myself that the face looks pretty okay, but I'm just not sure if it's fitting the style of the game. Like it, even though it's very stylized, it still seems too realistic. So I'm smoothing out the neck and the face, trying to get simpler shapes to make it more stylized. But as I'm still not getting the effect I'm looking for, I put the Raymond model right beside her to help me decide what exactly is wrong. And that makes me decide that the eyes are in my opinion the biggest problem because all the other characters have black pupils and pretty much no eyelids so I decided to try this for this character and see how that works. I'm also thinning out the neck, arm and legs to exaggerate the shapes even further. First I'm trying to make the eyelashes line up with the bottom eyelid, but then I decide that even though it doesn't make any sense, having the bottom eyelash not lined up with the bottom eyelid just looks really cool in my opinion. It gives the eye a really nice shape that fits the character and it pushes the stylization further. For the hair, I later on try a couple things here and there, but in the end, I keep it very simple to keep it consistent with the style that Rayman hair has. So get ready for another round of hair refining.
Finally realizing here that what is a Raymond character without a long nose. No, but more honestly speaking, I still felt like this looked a little bit like a person cosplaying as a fairy instead of an actual fairy, and giving her this long nose eliminated that feeling for me. I want her skirt to have a lace finish, but first I need to come up with a lace pattern. And I'm creating a design that I think mimics somewhat the shapes found on the wall textures on the Fairy Council and Heart of the World.
here I'm aligning this lace by hand, which might seem a little tedious. And most likely I could have tweaked some settings in ZBrush to make it align automatically better, but I just figured that this will take me less time than trying to find the right settings. Here I'm noticing that the legs are a little too far back by comparing it to some reference. Here to make her consistent with the other characters, I try to give her hand four fingers instead of five, but I ditched this idea because it doesn't look too good in my opinion in this case. With the face done, it's time to move on to the clothes. As this is another refinement process of the block out that I've created, there's nothing really to talk about here again.
I think it can't hurt to give her some swirly tattoos to make her fit better into the Raymond world. I'm having a little hard time on deciding what color the tattoos should be. Eventually, I go for a subtle yellow, but this still isn't really final. I might change this in the texturing phase later on. Finally, it's time to come up with something regarding the wings, which have been pretty left out so far. As I'm working on the final touches, I decided that I would like to try to make the sleeves look a little more interesting by adding in some additional patterns to the fabric. Thank you. 
So now I'm posing the character into that angry pose she has in the cutscene because I just really wanted to have a preview of kind of what she's going to look like once I do the whole retopology, texturing and rigging of the character. And once I'm done posing the character, I'm going to import the raw sculpt into Blender because I'm liking this character so much that I really want to make a nice pass traced render like the one in the thumbnail. I'm going to showcase all the renders I've made at the end of this video once the time lapse ends in like two or three minutes. And that is all I got for today. If you made it this far, insane, thank you. Once again, I wish all of you a great day and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.